Thank you for joining me today on Paint a Beautiful Picture. We are going to talk about the principle of laying a firm foundation in your child's life. If you've ever had a house and the foundation wasn't firm and secure, and so the foundation shifted, everything shifts in the house. The doors don't close correctly. The windows don't close. Sometimes, in all reality, what will happen if the foundation is far enough off? Certain parts of the house will start to decay or crumble, and other parts of the house won't have anything to stand on, so water will get in, and rodents and ants and termites. There are lots of problems in a building that don't have a firm, well-established foundation. And I promise you, if your child does not have a firm foundation, they will also have places that don't really fit, things that don't really open and close as they should, things that don't function properly, and it allows a lot of things in that don't belong there. <laughs> so the greatest thing I believe that you can do in your child's life is establish a firm foundation. How in the world do you do that? Well, you look at the bricks, the building blocks that are probably the most crucial ones for a person's life and well-being. We're going to look at seven of those things today and seven of those things next week when we do Laying a Firm Foundation Part 2. So please be sure and join me then as well. All right, let's get started. The first one is honesty. Telling the truth. Having a certain level of transparency and honesty with your life, with your words, they match up, they come together. What you say is what you do, and what you believe is how you live. That's honesty and truth. So when you ask a kid, as I know you've heard me talk about already, what did you do? They're going to be willing to tell the truth to you. Yes, I took that candy bar. Yes, I hit my brother. Yes, I said really ugly things to my friend when I was angry. That's telling the truth. And that level of honesty doesn't just happen. It has to be taught. And I really believe it has to be rewarded because as human beings, it's really normal, so it's totally common that we try to cover up our faults and we try to cover up our uglier parts. We don't really want anyone to see those things. Let me put a small disclaimer here. doesn't mean you have to tell everything to everybody. Some people don't deserve to know your most vulnerable parts or your challenges. They just don't care and they're going to blab about you all over the world. So there also comes a place where you have discrimination about how much truth you tell to certain people. But in your most vital relationships, in your relationship to yourself, first of all, and in your relationship with your parents and your best friends and those, especially your spouse, those persons who are important to you, you need to be able to tell the truth and be honest. All right, the next one is kindness. There's a lot of really unkind people in the world. There really are. They say mean things. They do mean things. Basically, their entire life is characterized by me, 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 and whatever you do that gets in my way, I'm going to cut you off and cut you down. Yeah, that's not kindness. Kindness is that out of who I am, out of my character, out of my belief system, I'm going to show grace and I'm going to show kindness to you. I'm going to do what is good for you. I'm going to speak words to you that are going to encourage you and bolster you and recognize what is good about you and recognize when you do something well or when you do something right. Yes, I'm going to show you kindness. I would like to say that kindness doesn't cost us anything, but that is actually not very truthful. Kindness does cost something, especially being kind to someone who isn't very kind to you. One of the greatest places to learn that is, of course, at home. I always used to tell my sons, when your brother acts awful, that's a great day to show kindness. I have told you this before. It bears repeating. When someone acts the worst, they need love the most. And so kindness is an element of love. 
The next foundational principle is industry. A person who is lazy, a person who refuses to work, a person who won't really ever do something for themselves, much less for someone else, they are not going to have an easy or a good life. There is a lot of value in being productive, in doing meaningful work. And so a child needs to be taught industry because for the rest of his life, that foundational principle will do him good. All right. So he has to understand that part of being a member of a family is to contribute. He or she needs to do the dishes, needs to sweep the floor, needs to be capable of folding clothes. I don't care if they start folding washcloths when they're three or four. They need to be absolutely capable of keeping their own space organized and neat. They've got to be capable of carrying out the trash, cutting the grass, um, whatever needs to happen in a home, they need to be a part of that. They need to have a sense of responsibility and establishing that need for industry and that thing that that does for your self-worth as you work and you contribute to someone else, that's a really vital part. And so you definitely have to teach your child the value of industry. The next foundational principle is justice. Some people have a strong sense of justice. So you'll hear them go, well, that's not fair. And my answer is, you're right, but life isn't fair. Some people are beautiful. Some people aren't. Some people are strong. Some people are handicapped in a wheelchair. They might have strength of character or strength of mind, but they don't have strength in their physical body. Life isn't fair. But all of us need to have the principle, the character uh, aspect of justice, fighting for and being determined to contribute to what is right. In other words, when we see someone who for no good reason whatsoever is persecuted or has a lot of prejudice against them, we need to stand up for them. That's what we can do. And when someone is wrongfully treated, we can defend them. We can stand on their side next to them and say, this is right. So we need to teach our child a sense of justice. We absolutely need to teach our children the foundational principle of mercy. Some of those very same people that are involved in the justice principle, uh, people of certain kinds of nationalities or color of their skin, or people who are handicapped, people who are sometimes mentally challenged in certain ways, all of those people need to have mercy. That element of compassion needs to be developed in our children's lives. I think for me, the challenging one sometimes is it's easy to give mercy to someone who never did anything to get where they are. In other words, they were born with cerebral palsy. Their body doesn't function normally and they're in a wheelchair, but they have a really, really brilliant mind. That isn't their fault. Someone who goes out and drives a car when they're drunk on their behind or high as a kite and ends up paralyzed in a wheelchair. For me personally, when I was younger especially, it was a little more difficult for me to be merciful to that person. Like, well, they did it to themselves. I could be harsh. But we need to teach our children that mercy is very vital because at some point in our life, every single one of us is going to need it. We're going to need someone to show mercy to us. Not because we deserve it, not because we didn't do anything wrong, not because we didn't in some way maybe even contribute to what happened to ourselves, but because in our pain and in our human agony, we need someone to have compassion and show mercy to us. And so it is really the truth, do unto others as you would have them do to you that in that golden rule, if when you are hurting and struggling and really in pain, you would love to have someone come along and show mercy and compassion to you, to walk alongside of you, and even in ways where they are capable of doing so, to help you, then you need to give mercy and compassion to someone else. And so even if they did it to themselves, even if it was part of their responsibility, how they got to where they are, still that person needs mercy 
and we need to lay that principle into our children's lives to be merciful. The next foundational principle that we should teach our children is grace. And people go, I don't really know what grace is. Let me tell you, have you ever seen a person, they're so awkward, they're so uncomfortable in their own skin? That's the opposite of grace. Have you ever seen someone who they're real gangly and, you know, they just, they can't seem to not trip over their own two feet or they're perpetually awkward in their words? That's the opposite of grace. Someone who is very fluid in their words, very fluid in their movements, and very comfortable inside of their own skin. That person generally is a person with a lot of grace. And so someone internally who is very comfortable with themselves and has got a pretty high level of self-acceptance and self-respect, that person is a person of grace. And it allows us to give goodness to someone else. So instead of always feeling insecure and needing somebody else to take care of me and look after me and do something for me, the secure person is more than able to do something good for someone else and to show grace to the other person, even when the other person makes a mistake or hurts them or offends them or crosses the line in their relationship with things that they say or they do. We need to lay that foundational principle into our children's lives. They need to be people of grace. And finally, we need to teach our children faithfulness. In today's world, and it's been going on for almost 40 years now, there are over half of marriages that end in divorce. People stand in front of a judge or a justice of the peace or a priest or a pastor, and they make promises that they're going to be faithful to this person for the rest of their life, no matter what, in sickness and health, for rich or for poor. They promise they're going to be faithful. And then they aren't. I mean, wow. Okay. We don't see much faithfulness. In business, we don't see much faithfulness. We see people make all kinds of promises, but they don't do what they say. I know someone who had a roof done after a hurricane, and within a couple months, the shingles were blowing down. So they called this company, the phone was disconnected, and the people had, you know, dissolved the business and taken off. So they did all this roofing at a pretty extraordinary price for people who had lost their roofs or had damage to their roofs during a hurricane and then they just took off yeah that's not faithful so that element of loyalty or faithfulness that's a really critical one people need to learn to be faithful to their friends faithful to their families and most assuredly faithful to their life partner to their spouse it's a very critical thing if we don't learn anything about faithfulness, we will just go as human beings from place to place, from person to person, from job to job, from situation to situation, but we'll never have any contentment. And honestly, it takes time within a relationship or even within a job to develop a level of comfort and a level of competency. If we don't have any faithfulness in us, we never even gain the benefits that come from having that loyalty and that attitude of faithfulness in our lives. And so those foundational principles, again, are honesty, kindness, industry, justice, mercy, grace, and faithfulness. I want to encourage you today to challenge yourself and say, in my life, did someone give me a foundation of these things? And in my child's life, have I begun to lay a firm foundation? If not, I want to ask you today to begin right now in your own life to lay a foundation of these traits and to also do it for your child. Thank you for joining me today. You may find additional information on our paintabeautifulpicture.com website. Additionally, you may watch me on Rumble. And you may also listen to a podcast on Buzzsprout or Spreaker, all under the name Paint a Beautiful Picture. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You may subscribe, and if you are interested in receiving notifications, 
please hit the notifications button.